Hello. Hi. How are you today, Christopher? I'm glorious. I'm glorious. Are you really? You're well rested, I take it. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm fucking despair, mate. <laughs> After what, like 12 hours of sleep? Uh, 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 that was 12 hours this week, actually. So I do that too. I mean, sure, sure, I don't have to do it, but I do it because I just can't sleep. Listen, don't steal my thunder, all right? <laughs> I get to be the tired man today. But, um, <laughs> okay. But, yeah, I've got a bit of a cold coming on. Um, I feel kind of schlenky. Yeah, um, you should stay away from me because I don't want to get sick. I mean, we're sitting right next oh, to each other. Oh, come on. Don't worry. It's, it's only wax. This ain't real snot. Just, just, just give us a hug. Uh, go away. Go away. <laughs> go away. You know, when go you, you, away. You know when you see one of those old men in a, in a pub or a cafe and they, <laughs> they always do that kind of comical, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> my dad isn't even an old man. <laughs> know why it tickles me um but there you go yeah because you're like... just a jolly old fella an old fella yeah that's exactly what they call me yeah so how have you been anyway been all right i mean did you hear the news about um those men that were prosecuted for gross indecency being gay they're getting pardoned <laughs> where in england in england there was yes. some men being gay in England. Did you just say there was men being gay in England and shocked? I am fucking shocked. <laughs> shocked, Tarman. Uh, go on. What happened? Uh, well, you know, they a load of them got prosecuted and what? they got punished. I, but you're serious? Like, some guys actually got some fucking flat? It was outlawed until, like, the 1960s. Okay. People got prosecuted. People had to undergo... Well, they got sent to jail. They had to go through chemical castration Fuck. as punishment. Did you not know this? Uh, yeah, I knew this, but, like, you're bringing this up as, like, it's current news. Like, what's Yeah, happened? well, no, no, the news is that the people that got prosecuted have now been pardoned. Oh, fuck me. That pisses me off. I know. Why should they be pardoned? It was a law that shouldn't have been a law in the first place. They should, their families should get apologies. It's the government that should be pardoned. Oh, it's horrible. It's disgusting, isn't it? People are saying it like they're proud of it. I'm just like, how are you proud of this? A pardon just means, oh, you did the crime, but we're going to let you go without any punishment. When they... Didn't do a crime, and they were punished yeah. severely. Sorry, sorry about your dick, but it's all gone. Yeah. The amount of uh, people that uh, went through the depression and stuff yep. because of it. Like, Turing, he killed himself oh. because of the chemical castration. Yeah. Because it was only supposed to last two years, but it lasted a lot longer. <sighs> With chemical castration, it's, it's pretty much shriveling you up, isn't it? Basically, yeah. That's horrible. That's such a horrible way. I know. And if it wasn't for these men, would we have been able to get that fucking archaic law, mm. you know. If you were a man, if, if Matt was here, I would pose the question, would it be harder to have it just chopped off straight or would it be harder to have it taken away slowly over two years? <sighs> I guess if it's taken away slowly, then you can sort of adapt, whereas if it's just gone, it's gone, isn't it? Yeah. The chemical castration, it was only supposed to be temporary, mm. but it wasn't. Ugh, it's horrible. Some people still do it, you know. I know, I know. You get it in certain countries as well. Well, not just certain countries. Like, you know that TV show, The Missing? The Missing. I, I, I'm assuming it's true to life. It's, it was on a couple of years, well, a year ago or so, about that kid that went missing. Well, anyway, there was a paedophile in it. Uh -huh. And he signed himself up to have chemical castration because he didn't want to be attracted to children. So I, I think it is still out there. We can still do it. There's some of it is in self-inflicted as well, especially um, in the pedo community, because uh, I think Louis Theroux did a, um, a documentary a few years ago called A Place for Pedophiles in America, yeah, where he went to this, this kind of prison where they're treated quite well, actually, and some of them don't want to leave because it's like free housing. Well, there was one guy who... And it's morally hard to, to, to place this guy because on one hand, he's, he's done what he's done. He's, you know, it's horrible, but he seems legitimately sorry for his actions to the point where he's... Yeah, no, that's what struck me when I was watching that show. I just, yeah. I never thought I'd feel sorry for a paedophile, but this guy, yeah. he has these urges and he doesn't want them and mm. he doesn't want to act on them. And he's sacrificing, he's going through chemical castration voluntarily so he doesn't have it. So he can go about life yeah. as... A human being. And that's the thing that you have to remember. Um, and I'm not I'm not defending him in any way, but my friend of mine told me there's a difference between uh, a child molester and a paedophile. One is chooses to do this to kids, and yeah. the other is just sexually attracted to them. And there is a difference as well. Like You don't have to act on it. Exactly. Like, you fancy Mary Elizabeth Weinstead. Yeah. You're not going to track her down and hump her leg, are you? Well, you don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> She'd it, have you arrested, mate. I don't care, it'd be worth. I'll, I'll, be, I'll see the cops coming down the street and I'll be like, right, I'll get a good 12 seconds in. I'll, I'll just do it quick. <laughs> <laughs> you do realize I'm comparing you to what paedophiles do, right? So you've just made yourself look terrible. It's not the worst thing that's happened to me on this show, is it? Let's face uh, it. Fair enough. Yeah, you brought up the Jimmy Savile, you brought up the incest. <laughs> what is it with you and this topic? What is it about paedophiles kids find so sexy? <laughs> God, don't. I'm sorry. Don't. I didn't want you to mention the chat to me last night, and you did, and now you're doing it again. (laughs) Why? (laughs) One in the morning. I don't want to read that. Oh, yeah, you do. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Welcome, folks. (laughs) To another episode of The Docs Deduction. The Docs. The Docs Deduction. What are you doing? I am talking in French. (laughs) <laughs> that wasn't in French. It's Joey French. Ah, <laughs> uh, you get it. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Do you guys get that one? <laughs> hey, that's a 90s banger for you. Oh, God, we're so 90s. I know, but I don't care. It's good. And I'm not I'm not one of those horrible, horrible, horribly cringy people that still wears 90s fashion, even though I love the 90s, you know? Oh, 90s fashion was awful. Yeah, I accept that it's gone and passed, and that it's just nostalgia now, but... I still like the good parts of the 90s, you know? Like um, Ken and Cow and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. It's probably like my... When Nickelodeon was good. Yeah, Ken and Cow. It's probably my favourite era for uh, for the raps. The raps. The raps, yep. As in the music or the food? The music. I, I don't know what the foods were like, but uh, they had wonderful raps. <laughs> um, Snoopies and um, all the... Um, and the ice... And the ice... And you've got the, like, the Puff Daddy P D D Sean Combs. Oh wait, they're all the same people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sean Holmes and all the no, and Combs. All the, His surname is Combs. And the Watangs. And uh, Wu- the, Watang. the Watangs and all the funs. The fun guys. You know what? When I first heard the name Wu Tang Rang, okay, I know this is stereotypical, right? But I thought there was some sort of Asian band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's called Wu Tang. Yeah. I thought that for a really, really, really long time. So you thought they were like Eric B and Rakim or something like that? Yeah. Like a, an Asian rap group? Yeah. <laughs> or a music group of some sorts. I never heard any of their music. I just knew the name. And I th- I, I just genuinely thought for many, 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 like you, many what, you years. you mean like Chinese Asian, that's all? Yeah, Chinese Asian. Yeah, well, they, they, they're they like these uh, these black gangster rappers that have a real fucking Yeah, I know that now. That it's weird. They have a real otaku sense of, I fucking love this culture. Like, they're like weeaboos of the rap world, but they're cool, you know? Okay. So, like, usually when someone is associated that much with loving a different culture, they're a little bit geeky. Or, you know, one of those hardcore anime fans. But these guys, they they fucking love um, Japanese and Eastern shit. Do you realize I don't give a toss about the Wu-Tang Clan? Oh, you don't? Okay. No. I've, I've not even heard one of their songs. Don't know what they look like. Gravel Pit. Mysteries huh? Unravel It. Yeah, Wu-Tang's cool. I... I... I don't even know what they look like. Don't know any of their songs. Well, you know they're black. You should quiz me on rap. It will be like quizzing Matt on. Um, remember when we quizzed him on comic book characters? I'll teach you on the raps. Yeah, he'll teach me on the raps. Do you side. do you know the Snoopy Dogs? Huh? I know him because he changed his name to Snoop Lion for a little while, and he was friends with Justin Timberlake, and he did that song. Uh, he did the Drop It Like It's Hot song as well. Jimmy T and Feral Ws. We we have lots to catch up on. The game. I know you know the game. Yeah, I, well, I know he did that one song my with Fifty favorite, Cent. My favorite. Game Hate is it or love it, underdogs on top. I, I'm not shine something. And the Tetris and all that. They're the favorite games. And then you've got like. <laughs> uh, and then you've got, like, the British rap gang, which sounds like fucking uh, characters off some sort of preschool CBBC show. You're like, you've got Tinchy Strider and Dizzy Rascal and I know Chipmunk. And, uh, I know them. Yeah. Like, they, um, they sound like fucking kids' characters. Yeah. What do they do when they grow up? Well, <laughs> they do what Little Wayne did. Just become Wayne or something? Or, <laughs> I don't know. Like, or Little like, Bow Little Bow He's just Bow Wow now. <laughs> I'm Bow Wow now. No, no, you still Little Bow Wow. I'm Bow Wow now. <laughs> you know, Tiny Temper is very, very tiny. He's like 5'2". He's my height. <laughs> is, he, is he actually yeah. tiny? Yeah. Oh, bless his Very pops. tiny. I saw, I saw him and Greg Davies standing ne- next to each other. They must have been doing a ch- panel show or something. Yeah. And Greg David is, uh, Davies is huge. 
Do you know who that is? He's the comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, isn't he something like uh, six foot five or something? Yeah, and compared to a five foot two man. Yeah, I'm only six foot two anyway. So even for me, that's quite tall. Yeah, I'm like five two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like free from blood. Well, I'm I'm okay. It's okay me being short because you know there's not as much stigma as to a woman if she's short. That's double standards. That is. Yeah, no, for a man, it, people are actually kind of scared because I think you're going to have that syndrome. So um, they stay away from <laughs> giving you any sort of reason to fight them. Tom Cruise is short. Yeah, but. You know what? I actually admire the guy a bit. For standing on a box? No, fuck that. I mean, his um, his stunt work. Do you actually think he does that shit? No, they all say they do. I mean, the insurance people never allow that to happen. I think he does. I think Scientology is giving no, him no, no, a, it's really, BS. a really crazy uh, idea of what life is. So he's just like, yeah, fuck, I can't wait to die or something. <laughs> Through the Because of the insurance companies. He wouldn't be allowed to haven't do that you, shit. Haven't you seen those pictures of him on top of that? tower in dubai anyone could stand somewhere yeah but he did it without a harness how do you know it could have been airbrushed out well maybe but how do you know he didn't because the insurance company really wouldn't let them do that are you you're seriously would, they'd be uninsurable because they could die in the middle of filming you're using normal people logic in a tom cruise argument <laughs> this is tom cruise talking about you know okay they're not even allowed to drive like fast cars when they're making films really yeah and stuff like that they're not allowed to do anything a little bit risky did you know that apparently once you become the president you're not allowed to drive a car anymore at all until no, in case you... yeah that's quite crazy isn't it yeah people aren't allowed to do this stuff insurance people wouldn't let them do this or mm. well, they they'd be uninsurable yeah. they wouldn't be able to get the film made that's true so it's all bs i mean they might do the close-ups of some stuff but no one does 100 percent of their own stunts no, no one. What about uh, Steve McQueen? I don't bloody know. That was eons ago. He's known for doing his own stunts. Yeah, but that was eons ago. I don't know what the laws were like then. Oh, yeah. Well, back then it was the Wild West, wasn't it? You look at yeah. you look at this, the, the stuntmen for the Italian job, and there were many tasks where they had a they had a plane ready for the director to get out of the country because if they died, he'd be done for manslaughter. It's just crazy, mate. I'm glad they're not doing that anymore, but still, it's kind of romantic how... Uh, how dangerous it was as well. Yeah, and now everyone's a bunch of pussies. They're not pussies. I mean, Idris Elba's fucking fine. He is fine. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, that was the orgasm I wanted. <laughs> that was not an orgasm. Yes. I think people have been lying to you. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. oh. I don't want to do this anymore. Oh, I, am. I feel so sorry for you now. Oh. You have short man syndrome. Oh, fuck. Fuck you! Fuck you all. You all lied. Oh, oh those poor girls. God, w- wipe off my 26 notches on the bed now. Oh, <laughs> Wait, 26? Okay. In fact, like, you can at least make it sound believable. In fact, I think it's minus one at this point. <laughs> I think I faked my, myself as well. <laughs> faked on myself. Just, I, I, was, I was feeling good, but at the same time, I was, I was kind of tired, so I thought I'd just pretend through sound and my body would just ease off. But I'm such a harsh mistress, I just wouldn't let go. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> while we recover, I think we should do the intro music thing. Where we talk about stuff. Welcome back from the intro music. Hello. 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 Hey there. Chris, what is the topic for this episode? Please tell me. Oh, I don't fucking know. <laughs> I was going to say <laughs> schlenk, but no. <laughs> no, I've, I've already forgotten the second one. Like, I've, I've had zero time. I've, I remember schlenk more than I do anything else. I've, I have zero time. Zero <laughs> time. A name that's not even right. No, it's not. But please enlighten me. So this episode, dear Christopher, mm-hmm. is about a lady named Grace Marks. Oh, I like it already. I don't think you will. Really? Well, you might do. I don't know. Maybe. Well, Maybe. I have tastes. You have tastes. That only murderers can fulfil. <laughs> uh, we'll see what she is. Well, so she was born in 1828. So everyone in this story is dead. Ah, oh, right? no I chance. Probably... <laughs> yeah. So there's no resolution to this. Everyone is dead. Oh. And because it was 1828, don't actually know all that much about her. Oh, right. So all I know is that she died sometime after 1873. 
Oh. And the reason that she is notable in my eyes, the Dork Seduction eyes, is because she may have possibly been involved in the murder of two people. Holy shit. Okay, yes, holy shit. At the age of 16, she may have been a murderer or murderess. That is quite shocking, actually, isn't it? But nowadays you do, like, for the age where it happened, that is a very, that's crazy, but... Nowadays, you're getting murderers that are younger and younger, aren't you? Yeah, it's really horrible, though. You get kids that kill other kids. There was a, a story in the papers recently of a uh, a kid, well, a, a, pair, a pair who went and killed a dinner lady and their daughter, and they were only about 14 or something. What What gets into these stupid, deranged children's heads? Mm-hmm. I mean, 14, that's not a child, actually. Nope. That, I mean, they know right from wrong. At the age of, like, three, you know right from wrong. Yeah. Three or four, let's say four. I mean, because you can comprehend stuff at four. Mm. I mean, you know murder is bad at four. You can pretty much tell when something is wrong, if anything. You, you have a moral and yeah, a you barometer, have moral code. right? Yeah, exactly. So, And that's why I don't understand why these kids get lighter sentences. It's just like, no, they knew what they did was bad. I yep. don't care how young they are. Uh, so the laws are going to be changed. I think these are probably going to be the first kids of this age where their identities will be given out to the public and, you know. Good. Mm. See, I was thinking that after I was doing some research for Grace Mars. I was like, if someone's been convicted for murder or something, mm. it should be like the paedophile system. They should be on a register so you you know if you're living down the road to one of them. Exactly, because th- th- these are murderers, right? They're not innocent and they're not going to be able to... And these they weren't exactly defending themselves. They admitted to it, you know. One of well, them, they don't always admit to it. Well, one admitted to it. The, the thing was, because they were younger, obviously the, the boy admitted to it, like, oh, yeah, power. And then the girl says, oh, he put me up to it. But then it was found out she was the one, the driving force behind it. And... Oh, it's funny you say that, mm-hmm. because it sort of relates to this. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, the possible victims of Grace Marks mm-hmm. were Thomas Kinnear and... Who was her employer because she was a maid? I probably didn't say that before. She was a maid in Canada. She came over on a boat from Ireland. Yes, literally on a boat from Ireland. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. And that was when she was about 12 years old. Her father was abusive. Her mum died on the voyage. Oh. And she found employment under Thomas Kinnear, who she may or may not have a hand in murdering. In addition to Thomas Kinnear, we have Nancy Montgomery, who is the housekeeper, mm-hmm. who was also killed. Okay, I thought you were going to say something, but no. Oh, okay. no, no, I'm, I'm enamoured. <laughs> You're enamoured. <laughs> okay. So, she is said to be the accomplice, or possibly the mastermind, with a John McDermott, who was a stable hand. Right, okay. Yeah. And how old was so he? He was 21 at the time. How old was she again? She was 14? 16. 16. Yeah. Right. But again, it's 1820 something. So it's, it's, well, 1830 something, I think, by the time yeah. this happened. But so it's not young, really. Yeah. So apparently her and John McDermott may have had a flirtation, which led to the deaths of these two people. Right. It still doesn't explain the motive. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Christopher. Mm-hmm. So the motive, there may have been a couple, but apparently Grace wasn't all that fond of Montgomery. Right. Because her Montgomery, who was just the housekeeper, and Kinnear may have had a special relationship, right. possibly sexual, and Montgomery acted as if she ran the household. It was her household rather than she was just another worker. Right. According to John, Grace wasn't happy about it and had suggested to him that they poison them. Right. But he refused to do it because he is a great man of fine moral standing, of course, John Mm. McDermott, even though he ended up killing them in the end. But, yeah, he refused because he thought it was unconscionable. Right. But eventually, when Montgomery had informed John that his um, employment would be terminated soon... Oh, that was it. That, and apparently, um, Grace was goading him a lot and calling him a coward for not doing it. So he decided, fuck it, I'm going to do it. And the first to go was Montgomery, who was hit over the head with an axe, but that didn't kill her. Shockingly enough, they dragged her body into a barn, I think it was, Mm -hmm. and they strangled her with a scarf because she still wasn't dead. Lovely. Not finished. Not finished. They dismembered her body and hid it under a bath. Christ. Okay. So that was the first murder. The second one was Mr. Kinnear, yeah. who came home, was wondering where Montgomery was, obviously, because she's the housekeeper, mm. and she didn't arrive, and then it got to the evening, 
I forgot to say what date it happened, didn't I? Yeah. Ah, okay. So it was the twenty eighth of July, nineteen forty three. So let me let me just get things straight before before we go into the second deal of this this endeavour. The sixteen year old Grace. She, yeah. yeah, Grace. She is not the housekeeper itself, but no, no, she's just the maid. She is just the maid. Yeah. And then we also have the stable hand boy, uh, the Kinnear. No, no, no. That's not Kinnear. That's McDermott. McDermott. Sorry, Kinnear was John the victim. McDermott. Um, Kinnear is the employer. So he he owns the house and the properties. All these fucking foreign and the money. Foreign names <laughs> <laughs> from that fucking England so the people they killed off first is the first was the, the housekeeper and she didn't own the place but she had that royal clout about it apparently she slept in the same bed as Kinnear right so possibly she had a sexual relationship with him with the main guy so yeah so to this point they haven't actually killed any of the house owners or anything anyone important not yet it's just been Nancy so far mm. But this is, this is going to change, I suspect. Yes. So when Kinnear comes home, mm. wonders where Nancy is, waits around until the evening, and eventually McDermott manages to get him in the kitchen and shoots him. Oh. Uh, this is where it gets a bit odd, because uh-huh. according to Grace, she came in and McDermott shot at her. Right. Apparently this is true. Oh, really? Police found evidence of a, like, a round, you know, the of the gun around yeah. now, that was lodged in the doorway. But that could that could be inserted anyway, couldn't it? Exactly. That's another thing I was thinking, but people are saying it as if it's true. But even so, like, what would be his motive for shooting Grace? Well, in my personal opinion, either Grace wasn't involved and John McDonough was lying this whole time saying that she was complicit, mm. or they were trying, well, they were trying to cover their tracks. Right. Trying to get a head start or something. Because I, I get the feeling that once this has already been done, regardless of the first crime, they're both guilty. He probably well, well, no, this that information just came from John's confession. Oh, right. Because well, so, um, it sounds like at this point they, they are probably one of them is a nasty person anyway. Whatever they could get away with blackmailing the other into doing what they want, or at least sharing the type of story that they want, unless they follow through with it. So this McDermott guy, he. You know, Grace is quite young. She's probably quite naive and impressionable. He could say, well, look, this is what I'm going like to do. I feel like she grew up really fast. I mean, she didn't have a mother. Her father was an abusive alcoholic. She had to uh, grow up. 16 is not young in the 1800s. True. It's really not. It's not even young now. That's true, yeah. Where was I? <laughs> oh, yeah, so they found a round in the gun. So possibly Grace was running away from him. Mm. Even though she was running away from him, she still helped him pick up cash and valuables. And head on a train to New York from Toronto. Uh, and that's where they were apprehended. Right. It's finally caught. Yeah. So, John McDermott, he confessed, but he obviously pinned on Grace, of sort he of, did. as the mastermind. Because you know how manipulative a 16 year old girl could be to a 21 year old man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he called Grace the mastermind. Uh, he was sentenced to hanging, which he was hanged at the end of that year, as was Grace, actually. Oh. But she's, yeah, but she had a bit of a breakdown, so it was commuted to a life sentence instead. Okay, yes, that's that's good. But, uh, well, not for the breakdown, but um, I, I, for some reason, I do kind of feel sorry for this Grace character. I, I don't know what to think of this Grace character, mm. because it just seems a bit off. Yeah, it is a bit off. And it's hard because this happened in the 1800s and people have written about it since but we don't really know any firm facts and after she was pardoned because she got pardoned after like 30 years in Mm. the 70s, she moved to New York and we never heard from her again. There was like no records of her whatsoever. That's weird. Yeah, but that's what happened in the 1800s. That's how Typhoid Mary managed to get around. Mm, Of course. Yeah. Bloody hell. Although I I, I kind of feel it's a horrible way to go and I feel the main guy, the, uh, oh, what's his name again? Oh, God. Uh, the the mur- Kinnear? Kinnear. Um, well, wait, are you talking about the murderer or uh, the victim? Yeah, the murderer, sorry. Oh, McDermott. Uh, McDermott. At least he did get his comeuppance anyway. But I don't know. I, I feel I feel like it's still a better ending than we have with some of these, these casts, you know? Because yeah. we learnt who the murderers were, for one thing. But there's some people that think that Grace wasn't complicit i mean it was a mistrial miscarriage of justice it may be a miscarriage of justice but what i'd like to think is that at least she did get away with her life in the end 30 years she would have been like 46 Mm, before she died well 46 when she was released all right i don't know when she died we don't know when she died so uh, 46 in 1870s you can't really birth children Mm. i mean she could get another job as a maid was she she released in the 
eighteen nineties then? No, eighteen seventy three. Oh, so this happened way before then. Way before what? So the actual murders took place about thirty years prior. Yeah, yeah, she was in prison. Well, she was in prison, but she also spent some time in a psychiatric unit right. or hospital. She was committed for about a year of that sentence because she had a breakdown i guess but then i don't actually know if she was actually insane or if it was just the time she was living in Mm. because the attitudes to women even now when it comes to crime isn't that great no because okay look i'm a feminist right of course but i believe that we should get the same benefits as men as well as the same punishments Mm. if a woman a say a female teacher was to have sex with her student and a male teacher was to have sex with his student, who do you think is going to get the more, most time? They're oh, not going oh, to be the same man, the man, for sure. Exactly. But it's the same crime. People have different expectations of women. Again, like, <laughs> I hate to admit it, but when it's a really fine teacher, you do tend to go, like, damn, look, that kid's going to yeah, be breaking. Yeah, still, it's still a crime. It's still a crime, yeah, it's still a crime, and it's wrong. But uh, I, there are some cases where, and I'm not talking about, like, oh, they're playing the victim or something, but sometimes you do get uh, the teacher saying the boy... And, and, you know, she she should have said no anyway, but the boy was going her on and really being fought forward. And But you get this with a lot of players. Like, you don't get to catch a predator, and they say, like, well, they were, it's entrapment. They were being really forceful and really wanted it. And it's, it comes down to the point where you say, well, you should have said no still. You know, you're yeah. the adult. You're the adult here. They don't know what they want. Yeah, what was I even talking about? Oh, right, yeah. Oh, yeah, the attitudes to women were different. They're different now. They were different then. Yeah. They had two opinions about her. So either she was an awful person because she's doing a crime that isn't expected of a woman or she's a victim. Mm. So she's either the worst of the worst or the best of the worst or, or just some innocent human being that's been wrapped up in it. They're not on an even kill as John McDermott. I think I would actually prefer if she was a killer because I can't imagine someone innocent going through all that shit. Yeah, it is horrible. Yeah, and, I'm, and it's happened so many times in, the, in history and, oh my God, I can't... I couldn't be able to fathom it. Oh, we've talked about it. Yeah. We've had episodes about it, I think. You know, murder's one thing. To be brutally persecuted for something you haven't done, when you know very well you didn't. That's why I love that series, Making a Murderer. Oh, yeah. I've only watched, like, four episodes, and then I ran out. Mm. Well, I didn't have time, so I haven't finished it. So don't tell me. No, I won't. I won't. I'll just say it's that um, because it's still going on, you'll hear things that kind of spoil things for you on Facebook and just the internet alone. Yeah, I know. I don't follow hashtags or anything like that. Mm. Anyway, I forgot on what my point was. Oh, sorry about that. You keep going off topic, mate. Well, that's the... This is my bloody episode. Well, that's, you know, it it keeps things spicy. Nice and spicy. Nice and spicy. You you know, you like a bit of spice. Yeah. So, um, I don't have an opinion. I think it's perfectly reasonable that she would have been involved. Mm-hmm. I mean, probably not to the extent that John was saying, because he kept saying that he was, she was calling him a coward and everything for not p- doing it. Mm. But this girl has lived a harsh life. Yeah. She immigrated to Canada with her family when she was 12 years old. Her mother died on the journey there. Her father wasn't much of a father. She had eight siblings, so if her father wasn't much of a father, I don't know if he'd be able to support them or if she was sent out to work to support them. Mm. So I understand why she'd not like her life. And uh, you know that feeling of being demeaned? Yeah. I hate it. So could you imagine her having to go into work every day and Nancy Montgomery just ordering her around like she's better than her? You know, we've all had times where we've we've thought to ourselves, if I could, if I had my way, I, I would take this person off the face of the earth, you know? Uh, yeah, we've all done that. Mm. That and during the actual sentence, I mean... Not that I've done her, it. <laughs> br- her breakdown... No, no, I don't I didn't think you had, because I'd probably be dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be the most demeaning. You have such a low th- thought of yourself. I'm very demeaning towards you sometimes. You're, you're, either, you're either brutally honest or very humble. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, I forgot what I was going to say now. What was I saying, Chris? Tell me what I was saying. Fuck's sake, Chris. Going off topic. Fucking hell, Chris. (laughs) Every single time, every five fucking minutes, I lose my train of thought to you. (laughs) You fucking tosser. Uh, I am a tosser. I I could see her manipulating people Mm -hmm. because she was sentenced to hang and yet she didn't hang. Because of the way she behaved in the court and the way the, the way the judge reacted to it. Yeah. So that clearly shows that she can manipulate people. I, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, even though you say yeah, at that age it's still quite old in, in that era, it is, a, a lot of times they are still quite young anyway because these people in 
positions of power, they aren't going to see uh, someone who's much older. They are going to see a younger girl anyway. She's still a teenager. Well, teenagers didn't exist, but, you know, it's it's still a young she's girl. She's old enough to work. She's a woman. Okay, okay. Hmm. That and her being shot at by McDermott and then still running away with him just doesn't ring right to me. Yeah, she doesn't seem the type. Well, I can't say anything, but, you know, from what I've heard anyway. Well, I just don't understand. So it's very, very... It, they're two different things, completely different things that shouldn't be in conjunction with one another. She's getting shot at and she runs away. How is she clearing out the house with cash and valuables? Yeah. And running off with him? Doesn't strike true. No. I think there's probably a lot of embellishment in McDermott's confession mm. about her involvement because he states it as that it was her idea. Well, that always is, isn't there? Yeah, just to get a lighter sentence. Especially when you've got these two people that are together and they're quite, they are young. Look, they might not be young there, but in mind, they are young to us. So they are going to be thinking, okay, yeah, I fucked up. Uh, it's my turn to uh, try and save myself if possible. They are going to start thinking that way and they are going to think to themselves, maybe I, I haven't known this person that long. Why should I go all Bonnie and Clyde for them? You know, let me save my own skin. Yeah, no, 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 I get that. Again, I've forgotten what I was saying. Is it me or is it you that's doing this? It's you that's doing this, isn't it? Doing what? Y- you keep making me forget. No, you're you're getting dyslexia. I mean, not dyslexia. Um, <laughs> dyslexia. Dem- dem- dementia. 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 Yeah, so I think it's perfectly reasonable that she did it, and I don't buy him shooting her and then her running away with him. You don't. Because I think it's easy to stage a shooting. Yeah. They could have e- easily done it as a, a form of misdirection. That's true. I, d- I don't see many causes of her being innocent. I don't see anything pointing towards that. No, I don't. Other than her testimony. I still think she's guilty of many things, really. But I just, it's, it's, just a, it's just a shameful way to end things, really. No one had... What the fuck was that? That was me moving my I thought mic. that was a lion. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like a lion. At least we can put some sort of clamp on the end of this, you know. Yeah, she did it. Yeah. Why are we still talking about it she, a couple hundred years later? I don't know. She's bringing out some sort of uh, sympathy from me. You know the writer Margaret Yeah, yeah, I know her. Yeah, she's written a book about it. She has. It's called Alias Grace. So is it like a retelling of fictional? I don't know. I've not read it. Oh. I mean, I didn't have that much time to research this topic. All right, no worries. I think it's probably because we don't know much about it. Mm. But we could be completely wrong. I mean, everything that I've said could be completely wrong. This is just stuff that I've looked up and written down. So I think it's because we don't know anything about it, so we can put so many layers onto it. For all you know, it could be two men. Possibly. Two lovers. Maybe it was Kinnear. He did it himself. He faked his own death. There is actually a theory that Grace wasn't actually Grace. Right. They say, some people say in inverted commas, that Grace was actually replaced by Mary Whitney, who was a friend of Grace's that died. Oh. So Mary didn't actually die. They're saying Grace died and then Mary took her place. Huh. I don't understand why they have that theory. Uh, that's a but bit of a there. stretch. I'm struggling to find out why they think this. I don't know. There was, like, no reason for it. Well, you know what? It wouldn't be a proper mystery without a couple of wi- wingnut theories, so... Yeah. Oh, there's also another theory saying she was suffering from multiple personality disorder. Of course there is, yeah. you know. Yeah. She she was actually dubbed Canada's first criminally lunatic woman. Really, a lot of women in Can in places not Canada but in places around that time, if they committed a crime, they'd get sent to the insane insane asylum mm. rather than prison because they think, ah, oh, she's crazy. She can't. She's a woman. She can't commit a crime. Yeah, that's what you'd try and get, though, wouldn't you? I mean, you... yeah, no, no, no. I think I'd um, be around a lot of crazies. Really, if I went to court and I was sitting there and the jury was looking at me. I'd try and shit myself if I could or something. Something to, so I could fling some poo at them or something. It'd be like, yep, yep, this guy's fucked up. <laughs> just, yeah, don't you think, you don't think every single person tries that. Mm. But I don't like the idea of living in a madhouse. No, I don't. It would be like hell on earth, really, wouldn't it? Yeah, and they'd keep you doped up as well, probably. Yeah, it wouldn't be lovely. Because like, you hear prisons now, they've got like Netflix and PS3s. Mm. Oh, mine going there. Ooh, you know, um, pre-1900s Netflix, wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> Those people just acting shit out for each other. Back then, they just called it the moving picture. Mm. And used two pieces of paper, and that was it. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, what is there left, Chris? Well, we know what happened to everyone in the story. Yeah, um, that's it. That was quite simple, wasn't it? Uh, I think the best thing we can say uh, is take away a message from this, uh, especially a message to our viewers, you know. If you're feeling like your boss is getting you down, don't frown. Just get on with it. You know, you don't have to kill him. 
It's not something you have to worry about. Don't kill your boss. <laughs> I think most people already know that. I know, but sometimes it warrants retelling. <laughs> you know, pe- people will piss you off, but if you try your best to control these urges, no one's going to go to prison. So, And fling shit in court, because that'll get you into an uh, insane asylum. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's not going to get you into an insane asylum. Everyone tries it. I'll try it. I'll try it one day. When you get arrested next time, you get arrested because you've been arrested plenty of times. Yeah, but I've never tried flinging shit. You never end up in the insane asylum. I've never tried flinging shit. But you're clearly insane, yet they still don't commit you. No, they don't commit old Chrissy. Who wants to commit Chris? Come on, honestly. (laughs) Um... Don't answer that. (laughs) Plenty of people. (laughs) After last week. Yeah. Yeah. There's really not much we can say. What, why, why did we pick such a uh, old one? I, I, I still found it interesting. Yeah, she totally did it. Mm. Well, she totally had a hand in it. That's all I can say. Yeah, she, she was guilty. It's funny how we can change our minds so quickly on this cast. Well, we never said she was innocent. I know, but I've gone through five different iter- iterations in my mind. Like. But that's what we do every single time. Yeah. Every single one. Every, like Every fucking time. <laughs> like, remember, um, which one was it? Carmen de Costa. Yeah, I remember. The f- moment we started that episode, we said, oh, yeah, this guy did it. By the end of the episode, we're like, actually, no, 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 they didn't yeah. do it. <laughs> they were victims of the media and the justice system. This other guy did it. God, we really stick to our guns. In an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, this is a record. We're at, like, 40 minutes and we're already done. It's like, no, nah, nah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud. We're, we're, we're growing as uh, as judges. No, no, what happened is that Chris, you didn't research, so you have no actually input. No, I didn't fucking research nothing. <laughs> no, so you, have, you have no response to anything I said. The simple truth is I just haven't been on it. <laughs> you didn't even Google the name. <laughs> I Googled the wrong name. <laughs> <laughs> I think that warrants some sort of recommendation. That's the reason that this episode went so smoothly. <sighs> well, it didn't even go smoothly. You tried to interject and distracted me from what I was saying. <laughs> That's as smooth as I could. I could make it. Um... <laughs> so basically, when we get short episodes, because Chris hasn't researched anything. <laughs> so so next week our episode is going to be 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that big Halloween episode is 10 minutes long. I, I'll try my best to accomplish, accomplish this. Accomplish this. <laughs> accomplish? Accomplish. Our fucking intro conversation was longer than talking about the story. It always is, though, isn't that, it? That's where we're all real, isn't it? That's where we're real. Yeah. We're proper... You know, it's just joshing. We're joshing. We're joshing. Oh, well. Oh, well, mate. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow, <laughs> oh, you're laughing. Oh. Oh, wow. Bless your cottons. What? Bless your cottons. Bless my cottons. Bless your, Why? You never heard that? Bless your cotton socks? No. Bless your cotton socks. Uh, Have you ever heard that? No. That expression? It, no. It's... it's Oh, never mind then. Just, why you do this? Well, I don't know. You don't know. Okay. Because we have nothing to say because Chris can't Google. <laughs> I think, just a message from Matt. He's saying, to so all Americans out there, don't vote for Trump. And also, watch out for clowns. And watch out for clowns, yeah. Those two messages go hand in hand, really, don't they? I'm not one of the clowns, by the way. Despite what I was dressed up as last weekend. No one asked and next you, weekend. Darling. How do you know that I'm not the clown, people? You just said so. Oh, you know what? I'd really find it funny if some of those jugglers got arrested because of the clown murders. Yeah, what, the, you mean the insane clown posse? Yeah, that's it. Mm. I, I thought to myself, I wonder if it's one of their pranks or something. Or... Oh, it's probably their fans, isn't it? Yeah, like, oh, jugglers go out. The fucking jugglers. Go out. And they're called uh, jugglos. Jugglos. Go but on. that sounds so much like a gigolo. I know, but... That's, Which is a man horn. That's probably what they intended, come on. Yeah, but no one wanted to pick up a juggalo gigolo. A lot of them are quite pissed off as well. It's probably because, you know, everyone acknowledges them, they're not really caring. <laughs> like, <laughs> but we're like the joker. Yeah, cool, mate, cool, mate. Keep dressing up in the makeup. You should dress up as juggalos. Actually, no, in this climate, we'd probably get arrested for being the clown, clown killers. But it, it's, it's not even that, it's just... Simple down to it. I want to stay warm, and, and fucking clowns are going to keep me warm in this coldness. Well, you know, clown suits can be oversized. You can wear layers underneath. Yeah. Big shoes. Wear loads of socks. Nice. Loads of gloves. Yeah, I'll be all right for that. Put a wig on. Yeah. Bam! You don't need a hat. I like that. So, basically, winter is the best time to dress up as a clown. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll get my old big old fucking seat out. <laughs> Yeah, see, I, only, I can only wear clown shoes nowadays because I'm fucking size 13 anyway. You're size 13? Yep. My feet are quite big for someone of my height and yeah. a female. You know what they say about men with big feet? They got big socks. <laughs> they say, 
Fucking hell, he's got big feet. <laughs> I just say they've got big socks too. Yeah, socks are going to work as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Core blimey. <laughs> but but apparently if a woman has big feet it means that they um they have a, a good waist or something to rear a child or something like that. Cervix, that's it. Yeah, because you gotta kick it out, innit? So Well, it needs room to come out. Yeah, you gotta you gotta get it out somehow. Yeah. Lovely. But I don't want a baby. No, no one wants a baby. No one wants a child, Tarvin. At work. When I'm at work and I see a child cro- about to cry, mm. I hand them a sticker to preempt it. People at work think this means I'm good with kids. And I'm just like, no, I just don't want them fucking screaming. <laughs> so I preempt it because I don't want them to start. Because if they start, it's going to be loud and it's going to annoy the hell out of me. Yeah. So give them the sticker up front so they shut the fuck up. <laughs> And put CBBS on because I don't actually mind their programming. Yeah. I like it when Big Cook Little Cook is on. Oh, I remember Big Cook Little Cook. Big so, Cook know. Little Cook, welcome to our cafe. Have you got my money? <laughs> Me and my older brother legit used to watch it before we were going to school. Or oh, I was going to my later years of secondary school. He was going to college and university. Yeah. Oh. My older brother, not even my younger brother, my older brother <laughs> sat down and watched CBBS. <laughs> Big Cook Little Cook. Welcome to our cafe. Have you got my money? Have you got my money? I'm going to make if it If you ain't, I'm going to shoot ya. Yeah. Have you made my... Because I'm a bloody juggalo. <laughs> These Americans probably don't know what the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> Wait, juggalo is American, right? Oh, juggalo is American. Yeah, the gla- that clown bossy. They're probably, they're probably thinking, what, what? Gordon Ramsay? Um, the Iron Chef? What are you on about? Well, he was Ginger, the little cook. Oh, I yeah. found it funny because the guy that plays little cook is actually a lot bigger than big, the big cook. Yeah, he looks like um, Steve Merchant, but with he hair. He does, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, I can say that, that now, with hair. Wait, wait, so does Stephen Merchant not have hair anymore? He shaved it off for the Crystal Maze charity, Red Nose Day thing. Oh, okay, is it Red Nose Day food? Yeah. I'm hoping that somewhere in the Crystal Maze, they'll find the original bald guy, and they'll, he'll, they'll have, like, a big fight. Chris, I've never watched The Crystal Maze. Oh, you missed out. Out of all the hundreds of TV shows I've watched, I can't watch all of them. Oh. I can't watch... People expect me to watch every single bloody thing. I don't think you know oh. how stressful it is to keep up with my watching habits. Oh. Oh. I understand that, but still. Because you don't watch fuck all. I don't You watch none of the shit that I recommend you. No. No. You wanker. I don't. You wanker. I just don't. Know. You wanker. I am, yeah. Dick. A little bit. Twat. Very much so. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other insults now. Cunt. Cunt. But that's a bit strong for you. Love them! <laughs> I, I was waiting for that. <laughs> you disgusting. <laughs> you disgust me, Christopher. You're a disgrace. I know I am, but what am I? Like, what are you? <laughs> I, I'm fucking done. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Uh, okay, I think we should say bye because we have to record the next one. Okay. And because we stopped talking about Grace Marks about ten minutes after we started. We did, but it's good it's good to have a chit chat. And everyone likes a chit chat. A chin wag. A chin wag and a josh and a and a and a goof and a gab. A goof and a gab? Oh yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to say bye. All right. All right. I'll see you later, lovies. See you later. Ta-ta. All right, mate. Keep bye. yourself. <laughs>